So I'm going to start with the truth. The truth is I wasn't going to make a Schoology screencast because I figured that there'd be dozens upon dozens of uh, how-to videos out there in YouTube world. Um, and there are, but they're pretty overwhelming. They're pretty in-depth, and they really are for somebody who is going to be starting at the ground up. And uh, you guys being teacher candidates are going to be dipping into our courses or groups. So um, making you go through the hassle of watching all of those videos seems a bit uh, just useless time-wise. So I'm going to give you the down and dirty what you really need to be aware of if you're going to be using Schoology in uh, your classroom to um, work with your students. So, quick overview. Um, think of Schoology as a digital classroom, similar setup to um, something like uh, Facebook in a way that you have your main landing page. This is your home screen, AKA the wall. Um, any feeds that you see right here are from either people that you're connected with or groups that you're connected with or um, that that's the information that you're seeing. So you can see I'm part of the Schoology Educators group. I am part of the curriculum instruction technology stuff. So that's why I'm getting this information. Over here I have reminders that I haven't bothered to grade something. Luckily it's only one actual assignment. I have upcoming um, dated items that I need to keep in mind, um, su suggested educators to follow. At the top you have email, you have connections, you have um, notifications right here, you have your own uh, profile information, grades and attendance, mastery calendar, app center. These are just a lot of things that you will probably not need at this point, so let's just go right into what you will probably be doing. So, we will go into a course. So, I'm going to pull up a course that is relatively raw. I have my ELA, Math, Science, Social Studies, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you into my substitute folder because at this point, it's not really being used. It's pretty empty, see? There are no posts. When I get to the substitute teacher, I am landing on the updates page. It's a lot different than when I go to my ELA page course where I land on the materials page. This is done intentionally because when I have a substitute teacher, I want the students to be receiving messages from me before they get to work. Updates are where I can send messages, they can talk to me, I can talk to them, and the materials are going to be the actual assignments. So this is some stuff that I've already prepared, but you don't have to worry about that. Let's let's just like get started. You have your options right here, and you have your add materials right here. Options if you want to force the students to complete something or to go in some sort of order or save the course to the resources if you want to use this in anything that you've developed or created for a later time, you can save it into your resources. Adding materials is pretty much what you're going to be working with 90% of the time that you're working with us. You have all of these different choices. Um, you can also import from resources or find resources. You're not quite here yet, but this stuff you will probably use. Um, if you need to add a folder, so for instance, if you're creating something like a book discussion, you want to be able to organize the information in a way that the students can access it easily and quickly. So let's do that. Let's add a folder and give it a title. So we'll call it Wrinkle in Time. You can give it a description, um, book club, or 
and you can either make it only available at certain dates or you can publish or keep it unpublished or you have all of these choices. I could either read it out or you, you're grown. You can do it. So right now, this new folder pops up and it's all the way at the bottom of all these things, but I, I kind of want it to be more important. So I'm going to click on the title and I'm going to drag it to the top so that you can see that it is front and center. And what I also am noticing is that it goes blue, white, blue. Cute, but I really don't want that color. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to edit the color of the folder. This really helps the students so that you can say, I need you to go to the red wrinkle in time folder. Now I'm going to click on the folder and you notice there's nothing there. So you have lots of choices and you can add an assignment. So let's do that first. And of course, none of these things that I'm going to create are going to be accurate because I wasn't really planning on doing that. And of course, right now, everything is stalling. There we go. So let's do first assignment. Let's do um, complete. Uh, let's just call it chapter one. And this is where you're going. The description is the directions. The directions are important because the students um, will need to know what to do. But I guarantee you, a lot of them will avoid reading something if it's just words. So I really do try to add in some sort of image to help them along so that they know um, what it is that I need them to do. And an image is going to pop up. This one's gigantic, so I need to shrink it down a little bit. Remember, you're working with little guys. Everything um, is visual. It's tactile. It's just really important for them to um, be able to have that image attached to the assignment. So you can say, you know, I need you to go to chapter one. I don't remember chapter one. It's the one with the penguin. Oh, yeah, that's right. So this is where you're going to type the directions for the assignment. Uh, Schoology is nice. You have all of these options to alter the fonts, uh, switch around the sizing of the font. Really helps you out. Another thing that I really like to do, you you can. Um, do an audio video recording. You can do an audio recording of the directions or also um, a audio and a video recording of the directions or whatever you need it to be. I do audio only just to help students who may not be the strongest readers and I just simply read the directions. Other features, if you need to add in a link to a certain website, It'll attach it, and then so it'll be at the very bottom. Here are is the information. If you are grading it, um, give it a date when it's due. What kind of category is it going to be? Is it going to be ELA, Math, Science, Social Studies? Um, if you need to add in a new category. So we'll do that really quick, and I'll call it sub substitute teacher day. Um, my rubric uh, defaults to a four-point grading thing. That's a totally different thing. And now I'm going to click Create. And I have the assignment. If I were to click on it, it would look just like this. And it's all set to go. So let's go back. And the way I can go back, I can go all the way back this way or I can just simply click on Wrinkle in Time. We have um, also just that we want to add in just uh, a link to a website for the students to check out. Look at this. And then you can either have that link displayed in Schoology or open up a new tab. I'm going to have them open up a new tab to do that. And it looks like that. Um, if you need to add in a file from your computer, you're going to attach it. I don't want it to be an image. You guys are seeing my personal stuff. 
feel so naked. Um, let's just do that. So now I have this added in there. And it's just a, you know, a web doc. Um, it's just a, a Word document. And you can see it needs to convert it into something else. I've never used the external tool, so I don't know what that is. I use discussions a lot. Um, I really find them to be a really great way to take away some of the anxiety of assignments and quizzes. So this is a, let's call this test discussion. And again, this is where you're going to be putting in the directions for what you want them to talk about. Change on the font, dot. Now you don't get the really cutesy font like chalkboard or anything like that. That's true. But, you know, at least you get something. This time I'm going to look for... Uh, I'll just use something from my files again. Okay, there we go. Want that centered. There we go. Okay. Everything's good. Give it a due date. Bloop. I can enable the grading or I don't have to. Um, I'm going to still enable the grading but instead of using a four-point general I'm going to use something like complete or incomplete I could also um, use a discussion type of rubric now I've run into this problem lately where I can't get to my other information so what I actually needed to do is zoom out and then you can see I have all these other choices and that's that's my workaround so that I can see everything so um, I'm going to click on discussions rubric and this is what I use to make sure that students are following my directions. I'm going to go back to 100%. There we go. And um, another thing you could do is add a test or quiz. That is probably something I will make a new screencast for just because there's a lot of ins and outs for that. So again, like I said, this was going to be the down and dirty of what Schoology is and how you can use it. And um, obviously, there's a lot of tweaking and um, creating that you have to do on your own. But if you use Schoology for um, work next year or if your school district uses it and you save it to the resources, you'll never have to make it again. Just improve on it. So. Ah, uh, I know. I talk so fast. I'm so sorry. Uh, if you need more help, let me know.